Howdy folks and welcome to Celebration Earth, the Houston Museum of Natural Science's month-long celebration of all things Earth. Each week here on YouTube, museum educators will take you through some of our grandest earthbound exhibitions. You can make a difference at HMS with a donation to our annual fund, which supports world-class exhibitions and captivating programming for the Houston community year-round. Your gift can spark a lifelong appreciation of our natural world and all of our visitors, both in person and online. Make an impact today. talking about some very interesting animals and organisms in our Cockrell Butterfly Center. And we're gonna specifically focus on some that may not be the most welcome in your homes or in your yards until you know the very specific job that they do. They're called decomposers. So decomposers are going to be organisms that break down um, dead plant matter, leaves, things like that, including dead animals and feces, and return those nutrients back to the soil. They're kind of like the garbage keepers of the natural world, and they're gonna be very important for reducing the amount of waste that we see all around. Some of our decomposers are microscopic, like bacteria, and some of them are a little bit larger, like fungi. And what they're gonna do is break down those deceased materials and then return those nutrients like carbon and phosphorus and nitrogen back into the soil so that our plants can use them to grow and produce things like fruits and vegetables. Some of them are a little bit larger, like our millipede here. This is a giant African millipede, and they're a more specific type of decomposer that we call detritivores. Their favorite types of foods are dead leaves. They'll also eat um, old vegetables, old apples, and things like that and return those nutrients back into the soil. Millipedes are gonna have a lot of legs to help them maneuver the forest floor and the ground where they live. And they're going to be found in a lot of different places. These large ones are native to Africa, so we're not gonna see any big ones like this in our garden, but we may find some smaller species um, in our gardens in Houston and the surrounding areas. So this fall, when you're raking up dead leaves, think about our decomposers like this giant African millipede who's breaking down that, that plant matter, returning it to the soil so our plants can grow and produce things like fruits and vegetables that we can eat and enjoy. They're an important part of our ecosystem and we're happy to have them around. So our butterfly center is actually a simulated rainforest. Rainforests are characterized by the amount of rainfall they receive each year. In fact, many can receive over 12 feet in an entire year. Though rainforests receive all of this rain and they're so important to our entire planet, only 3% of the world's surface is covered by them. So even though they make up such a small part of our surface area, the plants that we receive from the rainforests are very important. In fact, they are home to over 60% of our medicinal plants that we use for cancer and over 25% of all of the plants that we use for drugs in uh, Western medicine. So they're extremely important to our survival and our health. So the Butterfly Center, as we said, is a simulated rainforest and we're hoping that when people come here they can see the beauty and the importance of the Butterfly Center and the rainforest that it represents. The rainforests are under a lot of threats between deforestation, mining, and also climate change. And even though those things sound really big and scary, there are actually very simple ways that you can help. In fact, one of the simplest ways that you can help is just when you go to the grocery store. Try to look at labels when you're looking at items, especially shelf items, and make sure that if they come from tropical areas such as things like chocolate or coffee, that they have sustainable labels or fair trade labels. So those are things that help protect the rainforest and also help the populations that are growing these things make sure that they make the most amount of money to help protect the areas around them. One of our most important and unseen decomposers is the earthworm. Now I know what you're thinking, earthworms are kind of weird. They don't have an exoskeleton, they don't have a backbone, they're kind of squishy, but they're super important for soil quality. They can grow from anywhere from two inches to two yards, and they do a lot to increase the amount of water that soil can hold and the amount of nutrients in the soil. So let's talk a little bit about how. What happens is our earthworm lives in the soil outside and they're able to kind of turn the soil for us, which means they're bringing the soil from the bottom and bringing it to the top, which is important because a lot of times our plants are gonna take the nutrients from the top. 
So they're bringing those nutrients up to the surface where plants can use them to grow. Another thing they do is by creating these burrows, they're actually increasing the porosity of the soil. Porosity is basically the amount of space in the soil. Now this can be used like a sponge to help hold water in the soil that the plants need to grow. It can also be great because when a plant is growing, those roots can actually have a lot of space to move very easily. If the soil is too compacted, the roots kind of get stuck. They don't have a lot of extra room to grow, and so that can cause stunting of our plant growth as well. Now, if you're thinking that you might want to try composting or returning those food scrap waste that you produce into the soil, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One, you can actually have your own composting pile in your backyard where the food naturally breaks down due to bacteria and or the small microscopic organisms breaking it down over time. If you choose to do a compost pile like that, you'll have to turn it every so often as a way to kind of move those organisms around and move the waste around so that they have better access to it and more air to continue doing their job. But a simpler option for some people, depending on the space that they have in their living environment, might be to have worms. You create a bin with bedding and worms are able to kind of move their way around the food waste and around the bin in order to kind of break down those food wastes and return them back into the compost that you're creating. They also produce that liquid that we talked about, which we call, sometimes called worm tea. And that liquid can be used for your indoor potting plants or even in your garden because it's also nutrient rich. After about a couple months of time, you also produce that compost, that soil that's super rich with nutrients. We also think of that as fertilizer. And you can use that again in your potted plants or in garden outside. So worm composting, which we call vermicomposting, can be a really great way to use the natural worms that we have to create um, and reduce our food waste and return it back into the environment in a really beneficial way. So even though they're kind of weird and wiggly, they're super great for soil quality. So next time you see a worm, thank it for its service and take a look at the plants around that are enjoying its service as well. One of the biggest misconceptions when people come to the Butterfly Center is they think the butterflies are actually reproducing within the building. That's actually not true. In order for us to have our special permits to have these butterflies, we actually cannot have their host plants inside the conservatory. Butterflies are very specific about where they lay their eggs. So monarchs, for example, only lay their eggs on milkweed. Because of that, you won't see any caterpillars in here. And there's actually a very special reason for that. All of the butterflies that are in the conservatory are exotic. So they are not from Texas area specifically. So to keep down on any invasive species, the USDA or Department of Agriculture actually has our special regulations in place to make sure that we can minimize any possible chances of escapees getting out into the wild and causing all sorts of havoc. Invasive species can create a lot of havoc because they do not have natural predators in the areas that they're released in. So they can actually overpopulate an area very quickly and cause a lot of damage. Now this is confusing to a lot of people because they see butterflies as pollinators, and that is true. However, caterpillars actually are pests. They feed on a large amount of plant material and some are very specific on some of the crops that we grow in the United States. So that's why it's so important that we keep them very well contained. Now, our butterflies are actually purchased as chrysalis or pupa from butterfly farms all around the world, Central and South America, Asia, and Africa. These tropical farms produce these pupa in a sustainable way. In fact, many are actually nonprofit organizations that purchase um, hectares of rainforest that they protect themselves to keep from any further deforestation. There's also a huge socioeconomic impact that butterfly farming has on these communities. They create an alternate source of income to allow for these communities to make money without actually doing harm to the rainforest such as gathering timber out of the lands. to you from our nine native plant garden found outside of the Houston Museum of Natural Science directly behind our Butterfly Center. Now we're going to talk a little bit about plants that we find natively in this area and why they're so important. So behind me you may see some plants you may recognize like a black-eyed Susan, an Indian blanket flower, or even the Texas blue bonnet, but you also may notice some coastal grasses that are hugely important as well. 
you may not know that these, this environment, the coastal prairie region, is actually in danger. We've lost a lot of land and used it for urban development like we see here. But there are ways that we can help protect these plants and protect this environment by planting things like a nine natives plant garden. So these plants, like our grasses, are actually going to have very deep roots that sink deep down into the soil to grab nutrients and to help prevent erosion. So they're gonna be really important and low maintenance as a way to create a beautiful natural landscape. Our flowers that we mentioned are gonna be hugely important for pollinators. So we're gonna have native bee populations, butterflies, and even migratory birds that stop off at these plants and use them as a source of nutrition for their regular diet. Now you may notice other versions of these plant gardens around Houston area bayous or even in your backyard. And these are gonna be important for also reducing the, reducing the amount of work we have to do. By planting native species, we don't have to mow them as often, we don't have to upkeep them as often because they're pretty well adapted at doing this all on their own and being self-maintained. So next time you take a walk outside, see if you can find any native plants in your area. You can take a look at this diagram here to get a better idea of some of the nine natives that are local to this particular area, or you can always look up nine natives to find out what plants might be found in your backyard or in your neck of the woods. Enjoy taking a look at nature and recognizing the beauty of the plants that can be found in your backyard. Let's eat some bugs. That might sound really gross, but believe it or not, you probably eat some things that are very closely related to insects and other arthropods. So arthropods are a group of animals that have an exoskeleton and legs. And some of those things that belong to arthropods or that group are crustaceans. So those are shrimp, crab, lobster, and also within the group of arthropods are insects. So they're actually very closely related to things that we already consider delicacies a lot of times. Insects might sound like something gross to eat, but actually 80% of the world's nations are already eating them. In fact, thousands of different species are consumed every year and in all sorts of different ways. You're not just eating an insect on a plate, just like you wouldn't go outside and just grab some sort of animal and throw it on your plate. They're cooked, they're delicacies, they're seasoned, they're delicious. And if the little legginess is a little weird to you, you can actually do things like buying flour that's made out of crickets. Now, why is eating insects important? One, they're very nutritious, but the most important thing is they are incredibly sustainable. They are very easy to produce. They require much less land, much less water, much less feed, and much less other resources to produce the same amount of insects as other livestock, such as beef or chicken, pound for pound. So this creates a much less impact on our carbon footprints. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out the links in the description to learn more about our Earth and to see how you can donate to H Minutes.